Joining us right now is the Bonson Group Chief Investment Officer, Founder, and Managing Partner, and DividendCafe.com author. David, great to see you again. Thanks so much for being here. Good to see you, Maria. How does oil and the price as it goes higher work into your models and your approach to investing? Yeah, we've been saying it for some time that the bond market and oil are pretty much the only things that matter ah. right now. And oil in a range of about 75 to 85 is somewhat benign. It's actually quite profitable for us because we're heavy midstream investors. Um, it's above 90, especially getting to 100. You start seeing big demand erosion. And, and so that becomes very problematic. It hurts the consumer. It, it hurts the economy at that level. And then below 75, 70, 60, it starts meaning probably recession coming, that there's some sort of uh, uh, issue with demand. I think that in this range, we're at that bubble where they don't have much room to go. And the 90 range we are now really speaks to the geopolitical tension that we're dealing with. Yeah, but I mean, when you've got higher oil prices, that cuts into economic growth as well. So there's a story here for the broader macro story. But it depends on the level. It, it, it sort of indicates economic growth around 80-ish, 90-ish. That's what I'm saying. It's at that range where... It's a problem, then. Yeah, and it, and it does start to cut into it. But the thing that's interesting is gas prices have not moved higher, mm-hmm. and that's because refiner margins have come down so much. So in a lot of ways, the Biden administration has sort of gotten a very lucky gift for now, but it has no chance of lasting. You can't have $90 oil with, and $3.50 gas. And, and the other issue you mentioned is the bond market. Let's take a look at the 10-year Treasury uh, jumping to uh, higher than 4.8 percent yesterday. Yeah. As a number of Federal Reserve officials are speaking this week, you've got Federal Reserve Chairman Jay Powell going to be speaking to the Economic Club of New York on Thursday. We'll see what he says. But this messaging that maybe the markets have done the work for the Fed is out there. The Wall Street Journal out with a piece this morning saying why one official, uh, Fed official is ready to stop raising rates. That's Philadelphia Federal Reserve President Patrick Harker saying that the central bank should extend its pause on interest rates uh, hikes at this point because the market has already done the work for it. That's what we're hearing from countless Fed officials after the other. Is that what you think is happening? Very much so. I'm going to see Chairman Powell tomorrow at that event. There are three Fed governors in our outcome set, and people have to understand it's coordinated. They do not let these FOMC voting members go say things without you know, basically trying to get forward guidance out of it. Yeah. I think that they will pause. But I also want to point out the Fed funds rate is not controlling the long end of the curve. The Fed cannot control that. And the real issue is quantitative tightening. Yeah. They got a trillion dollars off their balance sheet. That's good. But the long end right now is saying there's no buyers except for us, yeah. people. We're not going to buy it at 2%. Before, central banks could buy it at very low. China and Japan could buy it very low. But the rest of us are yield you know, motivated. Yeah. So it's pushing yields higher. Quantitative tightening is going to end sooner than they're telling Well, you. even if they stop raising rates, Bob, the impact impact has already been felt. I mean, you came on the show a couple of weeks ago yeah. and you talked about some of the companies you're invested in and they've, they've seen their interest payments spike. Jump in here. Yeah. So, Dave, my, my point of view on this, and I've spoken to Maria about it, is, you know, this administration is inflating inflation and oil is the biggest cause of that. 41 percent increase in energy. It's the biggest inflation factor we have to deal with. Gasoline prices are down in Georgia because our governor took charge and yeah. reduced the state tax. What Maria is referring to is what I see out there is this administration is creating inflation. The feds are trying to hammer it down. And by doing that, they're killing they're killing the middle market companies. If you look at uh, bankruptcies, et cetera, I've got a company. We were paying two million dollars in interest. We're now 14. A hundred percent of our free cash flow, 14 million, 14 million is killing our cash flow just to pay the man. And so we've got two pieces of the administration fighting each other. And, and on oil, just look at ExxonMobil buying Pioneer. The fracking companies aren't going to produce more. I mean, this guy surrendered energy independence. Russia's benefiting from all of this. Mm-hmm. And it's so important to point out that the inflation you're talking about, the Biden administration creating, is on the supply side. What they're doing in energy is hurting the supply necessary to control prices. The Fed can't do anything about that. They can set the Fed funds rate whatever they want. It's not going to produce more oil, bring That's prices right. down. We're not clearing the market, and we're allowing OPEC plus us to be the marginal producer, and they're saying, fine, we want $90 oil. So I think what we did last year with Strategic Petroleum Reserve was unconscionable, and now we're potentially going to face yeah. a crisis. If this stuff gets worse in the Middle East, there's not going to be enough oil for us to deal with that there. But honestly, Bob, I think the point you make is one I wish everybody understood. The Biden administration has been a gift to Chevron and Exxon. Mm. Okay, we're big investors there, and I'm and I'm just sitting there going, all the yeah. competition's going away, yeah. and you're 
you're pointing out they can't afford the smaller companies are struggling with their interest service. Yes, sir. A lot of them haven't even hit a maturity wall yet. Right. Wait till next year and the year after where debt starts to roll over and they face the higher rates. We're in early innings of that. That's why I believe the Fed will end up capitulating. Well, this yes. is something that Stephanie started talking about. I've got to say three years ago, I mean, two, at least been, two oh, years ago. I'm a broken record. Yeah, so. <laughs> and you keep saying it, but I want to know from you how it's going to impact earnings. We've got a busy day of third quarter earnings this morning. Morgan Stanley is going to be reporting this morning at 7.30 a.m. After the close, we've got Netflix and Tesla. But of course, then the, you know, the, the numbers take off. You're going to have three weeks straight of incredible earnings. So, Stephanie, what are your thoughts there? And jump in. Well, I think the interest expense, as David pointed out, is starting to feed through, but there's still a long runway of that interest expense as the debt rolls over the next two years. There's a tremendous amount of debt still. I think it's almost $3 trillion over the next three years. It's going to reset for these uh, companies. At the same time, their input costs are pressured by this stubbornly high and rising energy prices. And as I see it, and I'd be interested in Dave's comments, um, their ability to pass those increases along are being constrained by a consumer that appears spent up and lent up at this point, especially with student loan payments kicking back in. Yeah, I'm, I've never been a believer that the student loan issue is a big issue in terms of wallet share. On the margin, it's a factor, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's the substantive one. It's that real incomes haven't grown enough. Real wages haven't grown enough. But I think that the maturity wall, and it's not just the bond market, it's floating rate, it's bank loans. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of bank debt. And so then if you start getting defaults, you could get a spiraling effect if banks start struggling from it. But ultimately, I think the Fed knows this. I think the Fed has been well aware that they got sort of a free ride in 2022 and 23 to some degree, but that there was such a huge maturity wall into next year. And so may, perhaps I'm wrong. If, if There will end up being a lot of bankruptcies in that situation, certainly a lot of defaults. And we haven't had big credit impairments since the financial crisis. Uh, real quick, would you buy into this market or sell it? There's I, I would buy select issues but not the entire index. The entire index is seven stocks. You have 493 companies yeah. that are flat on the year, seven that have produced all the return, but we would be buying dividend growth, high quality companies. As you know, that's what we do, but I'm doing it because we really believe it's a great environment to be getting rising income and more stable balance sheets. David, great to see you. Thanks, Marie. Thanks so much. David Bonson joining us.